Good morning. This is my third take. Bear with me. It's one of those days can't get my tongue untied. But it is Tuesday. It's time for our e-blast. I just want to share a few things with you. One, I'll be even more honest. This is really my fourth take. But uh, we'll see if we can get this one down. Uh, reminding you that, uh, one, if you haven't seen Sunday service or weren't in Sunday service, please, please, please take the time to go back and listen. We're in a series that is just dynamic, all right? It's not because I'm preaching it. It's because it's, it's God's Word. And there's some things here that will help you grow and, I think, tremendously encourage you in your life, uh, such as, um, uh, well, I, I just say it's just fresh and real to me. And when it's fresh and real to me, it's easier for me to preach it as fresh and real to you. So uh, I think you'll enjoy it. We're going to be talking about some specific things in, in in regard to uh, what God said to the to the serpent in the garden after the fall, and how how that uh, the judgment would fall there, and how He talks about the seed of the woman and the seed of the serpent, what does that all mean, and what's that all about? I do think it interesting that uh, the, part of the ploy to uh, and, and I won't cover this in the Sunday sermon probably, but uh, just as a side note, this is free, as I say was the, how that Satan appealed to Eve on the basis of, you know, you eat of this tree, then you'll, you'll have wisdom. You know, you're going to know more. You'll be like God. Uh, it's, you know, I've always said before that temptation always comes as a, to appeal to our natural desires. And it was natural for her to want to be like God. She was, she was already in a state of righteousness and God's like, she didn't know how God like she was in the garden, but you know, I think it was a, an appeal and it was obviously deceptive and subtle uh, because she took of the fruit. And uh, she had wisdom at that point, but it wasn't the wisdom she wanted. You know, the Bible talks about there's two philosophies pretty much boils down to. Uh, we think there's many, but they're really just at the base, at the root of all things. There's, well, Paul put it this way. There is the wisdom of the world, which is foolishness to God. And there's the wisdom of God, which is foolishness to man. And we live by one of those. You know, we're living in a culture today where there's so much chaos, so much confusion. The moral standards are gone. We kill babies, you know, before they're born. We, we kill old people and euthanasia in different parts of the world. All kinds of horrible things that are happening in our culture, you know. But we got to realize that, you know, that's, that's the wisdom of the world. And uh, that's not the wisdom of God and what... When Eve kind of ate the fruit, she became this woke individual, but it, she was woke to all that she really didn't need or all that she really didn't want. And uh, she saw that she was naked. She saw that there was, there was fear now. There was, there was uh, embarrassment and shame there now, guilty conscience. All those things hadn't been introduced. So come Sunday, we're going to be talking about some details that are related to that that I think will help you in your own personal walking life. But I think it also helps you to understand, I mean, I, how many times a day someone asks me, what's going on, Pastor? The world's going crazy. And it is. I mean, not just this America. I mean, people's common sense seems to have flown out the window, much less moral standards. So we're living in a time of great chaos and great confusion because it goes back to the garden, a choice of the wisdom of the world versus the wisdom of God. And one is foolishness. And uh, those who have chosen the foolishness of, of the world think God's wisdom is foolish. And those who know the wisdom of God know that the world's wisdom is foolish. So you, we, we, you're going to live your life by one of those standards. I live my life by that standard. You live by your life by one of those standards. Everybody lives by one of those sets of rules, all right? We either determine what we want based upon what the world tells us what we need or think we need. Or we go to the Father and find out what our genuine true needs are and fashion our life after his will and his purpose for our life. I am encouraging you that in the midst of all this chaos, not to be not to be deceived and buy into the woke culture, but to hold on to truth and hold on to Christ, because in Jesus, you truly are awake in Christ. You have come back from the dead. You have a new life in Jesus. You have a new mind. First John says, when we, and hereby we know we're the children of God, because we see the world now lies in wickedness. We see what's right. We see what's wrong, because we've come to Christ. So uh, as we move forward through the days and the weeks of the year to come, with all the chaos that's going to continue to boil up around us because we are living in the end times. Stay true to Jesus. Stay true to his church. You're going to see as you go back and listen to those sermons in the last few weeks just how much Jesus loved the church. And we talked about the greatest love story of all when we talked about Adam this last week. If you didn't hear that sermon, you definitely want to go listen to it because it talks about the greatest love between Adam and Eve and how pure that love was prior to the fall and how much Adam really did love God and know that the only way that she was ever going to be redeemed was to participate and choose to leave his father's house and to choose Eve. I mean, only days before, weeks before, months, we don't know exactly how much time, but it says, you know, when God presented Eve to Adam, he said, this is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. For this reason shall a man leave his father 
and his mother. And Adam ultimately chose to keep his vow. He left his father to be joined to his bride. And ultimately, out of that, a redeemer will come as God has promised. So come hear about that this Sunday, and we'll talk more about that as we go. Hey, I love you. Look forward to what's going on. Uh, see the events that are taking place. I'll post a few things in the bottom of the email that are just coming up immediately. But know that your, your church loves you, and I hopefully and prayerfully believe that you love your church as well. Jesus loves the church. Let's continue to love it. God bless you.